Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be going over Tuesday, February 20th price action. So I took two trades today and we're going to break them down like usual from the top down in context of market maker models and power of three movements within the market. If you hear anything in the background, that's my dog. <laughs> He's a little bit restless. He got hip surgery about a month ago, so he has to be in his crate a lot. And sometimes he gets a little bit anxious. All right, let's jump right into the charts. So first of all, it was a long weekend, right? So we had a bank holiday on Monday, which we expected to be kind of an accumulation, right? Of perhaps the weekly range, but also just be low volume and lower probability or expectancy because of that. So as a result, I did not trade Monday. However, Monday did give us some in intuition and some intel as to what to expect for today's price action. So I still utilized Monday's price action to kind of gauge my bias for the day. So let's quickly talk about my higher time frame bias. As you guys know from my last video, I'm still favoring a delivery into this sell side target, which is going to align with our 20 day look back in the market, our IPTA 20 day look back that is. Also, as we can see, we have an unmitigated daily fair value gap and a candle with almost no wick. So we can kind of see that as a devil's mark. And this could be a telling of a monthly power of three move. As you can see, this monthly candle here did not price in a very large wick either. So we might be referring back to this monthly open within this current development, right? On the daily, you can see coming back into this level right here and even maybe back into this daily busy and these 20 day lows. So my higher time frame bias is decidedly short for the time being, although that can change, especially as we're seeing dollar actually look a bit bearish as well. As we know, usually there is an inverse correlation between the dollar and the indices. So right now I'm still bearish, but you know, every day is a unique day and we gauge our bias on an intraday basis as well. So let's jump right into the charts. What did we see on Monday? Well, the first thing we saw on Monday that helped us kind of uh, assemble this bias was this critical SMT between NASDAQ and the ES. And as you guys know from my previous lecture, an SMT signifies an SMR, right? So although we are in a continuation cell model, seeing this SMT between the NASDAQ and the ES right here on your chart, you can see, I'll pull up my ES chart so it's a bit clearer as well right here tipped its hat to me as to what Tuesday's price action would deliver, which in my opinion was going to be a continuation of the bearish delivery, targeting our nice equal lows, right? On the four hour chart, we have this external range low, and this external range low is also a daily low, as you can see, external range liquidity. In addition to this external range low, which is a four hour swing low in the market and a prominent one at that. So these were my two sell side targets for today's delivery. And here's how I approached the session that I trade, which is New York. So let's toggle on these sessions. As you can see in the London session, we actually came up into this inefficiency, this four hour sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency. So we can mark that out. And in addition to that, we should be paying attention to how the ES traded as well, right? And as we'll notice, if we go down to a lower time frame in this London session, we actually formed another critical divergence between this high and this high right here. So this is the same two highs on the ES chart as they are on the NASDAQ chart. So I will mark those out as being an important SMT in the market as well. Again, looking for a continuation lower. I like to see these areas which are rebalanced, right? in an internal to external move actually show us right an SMT as well. Uh, SMTs signify smart money reversals in the market on lower time frames. So as you can see in the London session, we came from this external range low, which I'll mark out always with these blue lines back into an internal range. And as we know, the intermediate time frame to the four hour is the 15 minute chart. So we can see that the London session actually delivered a beautiful internal to external range move, right? External range liquidity on the four hour back into internal, then back down to external, right? The market cycles between ERL and IRL. So we've taken out a swing low, we come back into an inefficiency, and then we target that swing low again. This is the continuation of bearish order flow, right? This is what makes our higher or lower highs 
and lower lows, essentially putting in structure that's bearish is a refreshing, right, or a recycling of price in these key areas of interest signified with SMT as well. So let's hop back into our higher time frame charts, and that was the London session. Now let's take a look at what the New York Open delivered. So as you can see uh, from my Twitter, I actually went long in the New York Open after seeing this piece of price action. So first of all, I saw us trade into this external range low on the four hour. Again, my mind immediately now goes into an internal move, specifically seeing we have this four hour imbalance that is yet to be fully mitigated. And in fact, if we draw out quartiles of this gap, we can see we have not even mitigated a premium of this gap yet. So let's go and look at the quartiles of this gap, right? We've only just come in to this bottom quartile, which is a highly, highly uh, discounted, I guess you could say, area of this gap. And we'd want to see price reach in a little bit higher. So although it didn't, in hindsight, my bias for the morning was going to be an external move, right? Below these lows, back into an internal move. So let's take a look at my 15 minute time frame, which is going to show me kind of my lower uh, intermediate time frame to start looking for trades. And this trade was recorded live on my Twitter, so you can go back and refer to that. And as you can see, once London comes through and takes out this low, we start to put in this bottoming pattern. And what I mean by a bottoming pattern is that we're starting to disrespect these bull or bearish PD arrays. And in fact, we're printing displacement and bullish PD arrays inside of them. Now, as you know, we can't consider a reversal in the market, even on the short term, without critically looking for an SMT. So let's take a look at our 15 minute chart and see if we get some form of SMT. Actually, we can even go up to our higher time frame and see if this swing low in the market, which will be denoted by this low right here, was taken on ES and NASDAQ. Well, as we can see, we form our SMT right here between these two lows, right? So this is our SMT with ES. And then once we get that inversion or natural support level on the 15 minute, right? Let's draw that out. That natural support level on the 15 minute. Then we can zoom in and actually try and piece together. I'm going to get rid of this line. Piece together what's actually going to be the draw on liquidity for the equities open. So seeing this manipulation beforehand, I'm now going to be framing this power of three move. I see accumulation here, right? Right in this uh, inefficiency, but not yet in a premium level. I also see this low resistance liquidity signature, which is essentially failure swings in the market. After seeing failure swings and a low resistance liquidity signature, what I look for is a meaningful manipulation. As you can see, we manipulate this four hour external range low. And now I'm looking for any signs, right, that we are going to be distributing back in to that high, specifically targeting those failure swings. As you'll notice on your ES chart, there's even more confluence to target that area in the form of these relative equal or in fact equal highs, uh, which you can see the SMT divergence printed on in the London session. So that was my framework for the morning, um, just playing the equities open distribution higher. Now, what PD array did I center this analysis around? Not only did I see this inversion gap offering support, so some people will refer to these as natural support, SN, support natural. However, I also saw us print this small inefficiency in the form of a 15 minute BISI or fair value gap, bullish fair value gap. So I marked that out as well. Let's use a green line just so we can keep track of everything. Okay, so now that I saw this 15 minute inefficiency that was being respected, we're forming something called a rejection block in here, which is where the wicks of these candles are rebalancing this PD array, but the bodies are holding above a certain level. So let's mark out this rejection block in another color. Let's maybe use this purple color and call this an M15RB. This is our, let's move this label over to the bottom right, right? This is our rejection block. And then this is our BISI and our inversion fair value gap. So we have three PD arrays that we're framing longs off of. Now, naturally, we can hop down to our lower time frame, right? So again, we're moving from external on the four hour to internal after moving previously from internal to external, framing our market maker model, our natural cycle in the market, which is 
again, something I can refer to on my Twitter, on my YouTube. It's essentially the model I trade. So once I get some 15 minute structure here, like this market structure shift in here, which we can denote with this little symbol like that. Now I'm targeting this, you know, consolidation high. Now on the lower time frame, which is going to be my one minute chart, I can start to scope out entries. Of course, on this time frame, we can't forget to use our standard deviation projections. And as you can see, this last manipulation leg is the one I choose for a couple reasons, right? First of all, it is the leg that leads to a liquidity sweep and then a change in the state of delivery, right? When we close above this candle, it's a market structure shift. And then this is the SISD. And then also we're pairing this, right, with our most important confluence for this reversal, which is going to be our SMT with ES. So this leg in here is going to be projecting in time this manipulation and this power of three move. As I can see, I have a very nice confluence with my 2.5 deviation lining up with my buy side liquidity target. All right, so let's mark that out as our low hanging fruit. Let's make it a bit bigger. We'll call this our low, low hanging fruit. And then of course we have the rest of these failure swings to target, which are gonna be this high and even this high, right? These are all potential targets, all swing highs in the market. Of course, I didn't mark out all of them. I just had this prominent swing high. And I was also potentially looking for maybe this swing high in the market, which would align, of course, to a higher time frame. Maybe look at the hourly swing high, right? Um, but my majority of my position was going to be coming off at this 2.5 level. As you can see in my YouTube uh, or in my Twitter recording, I took off five, I think, out of my six contracts at this 2.5 level. Um, so let's go down to our one minute chart and kind of look at what entry models are provided to us. So in, in consistency with the model I trade, right? Once we come into this rejection block, where there's a very, there's very good entries that you could potentially take. And we, actually let's look at just this right here. This is a very nice entry you can take in here, you know, right before equities open. I actually got in a bit earlier. So once we formed this 15 minute gap, Right? I got in pre-market at around 8.30 a.m. So let me see if I can look roughly where I got in. Again, you can see my execution on my uh, YouTube, or my, on my Twitter, rather. So I think I got in somewhere around here, maybe. Um, maybe even somewhere like that. And then, of course, I was going to be targeting this high for my first TP. And then the, the final target was going to be these London equal highs. And, of course, my stop loss, because pre-market is what I refer to as an area of time distortion, meaning this axis is usually, right, in the period from about 9, 9.15 or 9.10, let's go 9 a.m. even. So from 9 a.m. to about 9.25, we usually some see some meaningful level of manipulation and or, you know, price accumulation in here. So I like to keep my stop losses as an invalidation of my PD array. So that's gonna be my intermediate time frame. So I'm framing my stop loss as a closure below this inefficiency. It's really only a 15 point stop loss, right, in the market. Um, maybe even if you get in higher, it'd be like a 25, 30 point stop loss. So both ways you're getting, you know, a two, a two to one at least, right? Depending on where you got in. I believe I got in somewhere around here and I may have even averaged again. I don't quite remember. Just go look at my Twitter execution, it's all there. I try and be transparent with my executions by recording them. And then as you can see, price delivers quite nicely into our target using that equities open volatility injection to form yet another, right, SMT in the market between these lows. And then of course, liquidating our highs before eventually reversing quite rapidly. So that was our morning trade using a four hour external to internal move with the confluence of a power of three, right, an SMT. And then also looking at um, the structure that was formed, right? The bullish structure and the inversion. Moving into the afternoon then, I played another long in the market. So I actually didn't play short today. Um, I played another long in the market, again, using the same three time frames. So coming into the 2 p.m. p.m. session, right? I was looking to frame another four hour power of three move. Having seen us sweep this liquidity pool, I then went to my ES chart. This was in the 10 a.m. four hour close, right? 
So as you can see, this happened, you know, in the morning session. If we go down a time frame, you can see we swept this out at around uh, noon, 1230. And then what I look for, as always, is signals that we're going to be closing inside of this range and returning from what to what, right? External to internal. So again, I'm framing this potential move in back into this four hour SIBI, right? The natural oscillation of price is external to internal. So what we want to look for here based on our four hour is this candle to now pull back into this area after we had previously went from internal into external, right? Something like this. Again, another beautiful framed market maker model. So what do we look for? An SMT to begin. And that's going to be right here. We can see this swing low right here. And we want to measure out where that swing low is on the ES chart. And on the ES chart, we can see that swing low could be this one right here, where there's also an SMT. But even the lower swing low here is also an SMT. So there's a large divergence in the market we can see between ES and NASDAQ. We'll mark that out as always. Right? And now we can look for our lower time or intermediate time frame market maker model. It's going to flip off my sessions here. Again, 15 minute is the intermediate to the four hour. And as you can see, we've now come into an area reversed with an SMT and we can frame another move on this 15 minute chart into these relative equal highs. As you notice here, there was another SMT formed in the market. Right? You'll notice a trend that repeats itself time and time again is when we have continuation rebalances, we usually form SMTs and then those SMTs lead to another displacement lower. Now there's another confluence here in addition to seeing, you know, the same kind of things I saw before. A natural support level, right? Inversion fair value gap. We see one form there. We see a second one form here again. We can look at how precise price action is respecting these arrays. But in addition to these inversion fair value gaps, we actually had another confluence, which you may have missed, which is going to be using our higher time frame standard deviation projections. So you might be asking me, which one am I using? Well, I see, right, from this most recent price leg lower, right, we have this standard deviation projection on the four hour from last Friday. As you can see, price comes directly in to that fourth deviation level. Let's mark it out with a different color. And this is an area where we can look for reversals or retracements and frame turtle soup entries. Turtle soups are simply liquidity sweep entries, right? And what, what, what the reasoning or the rationale behind this is, is that once price has delivered terminus, right? You can see swing low, inefficiency, and SMT it is likely to want to rebalance some form of dis of in this case premium level liquidity dexter uh, a lab teaches this as uh, wife liquidity but you can also just refer to this as premium levels of liquidity so if i take a dealing range and i draw my dealing range low to high you can see that we come in and we want to target some form of liquidity above here so obviously we have this internal range liquidity right in here and on a lower time frame, right? We can even frame a possible swing high that aligns with that internal range liquidity. Fantastic. So we'll call this our, our buy side, buy side 50% or wife liquidity. Now this is going to be an important distinction because we had this confluence right here. So we're expecting price to retrace into not only this four hour gap, but also this prominent set of failure swings. Now you might be asking, why didn't I use a different swing progression, right? Why did I use this deviation progression? Well, you could also just as easily, right? Frame this standard deviation projection. And as you can see, you get very similar results with the fourth deviation acting as an area of reaccumulation and um, uh, again, manipulation back into the range into the 50%. So the reason why I chose this specific dealing range is because one, we form an SMT here. If you don't believe me, that can be your homework. <laughs> Go and check on your charts. We form an SMT with ES, where ES actually forms a higher high on this candle. So it's a 15 minute SMT, it's easier to see. And here was a bank holiday. 
So I don't think that there was as much volume, right, or institutional activity in this day as there was in this day. So I used this, um, you know, more meaningful uh, volume-based SMT, I guess you could say. I mean, I don't use volume in my analysis often, but this is a bank holiday, so I don't, I don't really like to use a lot of the arrays I see in here. Okay, then we go down to our 15-minute chart, and we repeat the same process, right? We're moving from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity, framing our 15-minute market maker buy model, right? So we have two sides of a curve. Now what I'm going to be doing is using the intermediate and lower time frame, right, to position myself to take a long trade. So as you can see, there's entries, several entries in here. You can get in on a natural natural support, the inversion level. There's two opportunities. We get our market structure shift above this high, so you can wait for this high to be closed, and then kind of refer back to any of any of the like these areas. What I actually liked is the ideal entry, um, which I took was going to be this order block. Now I like this order block especially, let's make this a purple color, because it tags and rebalances our inversion or natural support level. So the narrative associated with this order block, right, is also an immediate rebalance of this candle high, right, the IFC2 teaches this has an immediate rebalance, and also tagging a higher time frame, or in this case an equal time frame, inversion PD array. So there's a lot of narrative associated in this down close candle. So when price comes back into here, right, we can then take a long trade. You can go down to the one minute and find an optimal entry. I entered on the 15 minute array without going down a time frame. And then you want to set your stop loss, you know, below the meaningful swing low in the market. So uh, this was another trade I took. And again, we had it qualified with the SMT here. And also, right, the secondary SMT right in here. Hey, if you see that. So this SMT also formed right in our PD array of interest, which would have been a great signal to again, go long, targeting our wife or buy side liquidity. Now, the last thing I want to mention is how, what standard deviation projection would I use or you know, power of three projection would I use for this external to internal move? And what I would use is similar to the last video in this four hour, I'm going to get rid of these, this four hour candle wick is where we would say smart money is positioning itself. So smart money is being an active buyer of the market in this down close candle, but more specifically is manipulating in this wick. So if we could think of this wick as the manipulation of smart money, let's make this color maybe a blue, right? We want to be able to use a deviation projection that frames this wick itself, right? As the manipulation lower. Because that is where smart money, right? Smart money is positioned within the wick. I dot, we, so we can call this a manipulation. This entire wick on the four hour is a manipulation of price. So now when we go down to our 15 minute chart, we now see that this deviation projection from that wick low to open, right? Which is gonna be up here. That's going to leave our first, which is right here rather, is going to leave our first deviation as a very strong target in addition to remembering, right, our dealing range. And our dealing range is going to be defined as this swing low in here all the way up to this swing high in here or even this swing high in here. Let's look at a four hour chart. Yeah, let's, let's use this swing low, this high right here because that rebalances this efficiency, efficiency. And we want to look for anything that's considered to be in fair value or in premium of this inefficient, of this dealing range. So I'll mark that out with this gold line. And as you can see, lots of confluences in here for this four hour SIBI, these highs. And then if you want to get very specific in this one to 1.5 region of price. So we can take a long here and then position ourselves to uh, have our loss underneath the swing low that should not be violated. Do again, to this SMT. All right, so that's the price action review for today. I hope you found it valuable. If you have any questions, as always, uh, put them in the comments, DM me on Twitter. And yeah, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing and sharing with anyone else who's uh, an ICT trader. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.